hope you're all doing well. Pizza locks, and you know it. Don't forget to even hashtag that shit. Keeping it bloody legal. So, as you can see, I've added a little bit more to Bob. Uh, and before you say anything, no, she's not built a bloody code because it's not the actual right thickness for a door. Um, so, and as you can see, I couldn't be bothered, you know, placing all this. You know, it's got to be set in back a bit so that it all sits nice and flush. I couldn't be bothered. It's just for display purposes and probably... More than likely going to damage these locks in the process of going through different ways to actually enter them. Um, start off with non-destructive, and then I'll move through to the, some destructive methods. Maybe, who knows? It'll be kind of fun. Um, but, today, the first one I wanted to cover when it comes to Bob and entry methods is latch slipping. So... I've added the deadbolt down the bottom just here, mainly because a deadbolt can't be slipped or loitered uh, because it's not spring-loaded. It manually has... My camera just went funny. Um, it manually has to be, you know, turned to lock and unlock with a key. So it can't be slipped in the sense that, you know, it's not spring-loaded like it is on the one up here. So let's move up a little bit, and I'll pause my camera and move up to the one above it. So as you can see, I have a handle set up the top here, an entrance handle has a kick on the outside here, or the key in the knob, and then on the inside it has a thumb turn to lock it, but it has a spring-loaded latch on here that also has a guide latch at the front which is there to stop the actual latch from being depressed in when that is actually pushed in if they are installed correctly and those of you that are wondering yes that latch is actually installed back to front I did that for the purpose of these videos just to make it a bit easier to actually show you and demonstrate uh, the latch is installed as if the door would be pulled open towards you rather than pushed in the other direction. Uh, this was installed correctly on the way it would actually go. This latch would be facing the other way so you'd open it and push the door away from you to actually enter rather than pull it towards you. But I thought it would work a bit better just to show you on here if I had it installed this way. And on the other side, as you can see, I actually put a Euro cylinder. Um, I couldn't be bothered. I'm trying to fit on as much as I can into this wooden board, display board. Um, so I've just screwed into the side just here and cut out little cut uh, spots so that the actuator will actually freely rotate in through it. Just to show people how the Euro locks actually work with the thumb turn on the back and a bypass that you can use for these as well that I will cover in another video. So that's what I've got set up so far. I have a Euro cylinder with a thumb turn for bypassing. I have a deadbolt with a non-spring loaded locking latch and the spring loaded latch on the uh, kick entrance set. So. When it comes to latch slipping, you are going to want a latch that is actually spring-loaded like this one just here. And as I said, there's one piece on them that is designed to stop us from slipping them, and that is the guard latch at the front just here. So if these are installed correctly with the strike plate, it will sit in that kind of fashion there, depressing that guide latch, so that the guard latch, I should say, so that... Not guide, guard latch idiot um so that you cannot actually depress the latch to slip it but there's a couple of methods in which you can actually uh, allow that guard latch to pop out so that you can actually spring use the uh, spring load latch on there to loid them so how can you do that well the first method involves like i can do with the back door of the house here if I push in on the door, into the door frame, I hear that sound, which means, and I've all, we've all had it, my old man was one of them, he'd always 
pull the door extra tight, like give it a good hard pull when you shut it because he believes that sound was actually the door locking, but instead he was actually freeing it up so that it could be slipped. The latch could be slipped. So if they're installed correctly, that guard latch will actually be depressed in there so that that can't be pushed in. So as I said, either pushing or pulling on the door just that little bit will usually allow, if you've got enough movement in there, for it to fall in, then you can actually slip the latch using either Slim Jim, a traveler hook, or the plastic shims for doors. The other method if that you can use doesn't just work on these ones here. It will also work on the spring-loaded locking or the spring-loaded latches that they use when you have two doors facing each other. Um, and you have the longer latch that sits in there and you usually have a guard latch that sits above it. And you can't, if that is depressed, you can't push the actual latch in because the guard latch is depressed. That's where a very underrated tool, a very useful tool, can actually come into play. And I am talking about a pump wedge. Pump wedges are under rated and they are bloody useful tools. I have two of them, one of them here and there's one actually in my break into anything kit as I named it. And as I said, if you have the other latch that has the guard latch that sits above it, you can actually wedge this in between the two doors or even if one of these, you can actually wedge it in between the door and the door frame. Put your pump wedge in between the two. You can then use it and pump it up to push the door and slightly out from the door frame, allowing the whole, if I can pick it up, allowing the, I'm trying to hold all this at the same time, allowing the door to be pushed out from the door frame, then allowing that guard latch to be weakened or let out as you pump up the wedge, you're going to be separating the door from the strike plate, allowing it to get to the point where it is no longer in effect, and you can actually slip the latch. And as I said, between the two doors with the other ones, the guard latch up there, just need to pump it up just enough to allow that guard latch to be fully extended, then it will free up your latch to actually be able to slip the latch then hold it in as you deflate your pump wedge and then pull the door open or push depending on which direction that the door has to open and which way you're trying to open it. But there are two ways of doing it, either putting a little bit of force forwards or backwards on the door to allow it to slip into the actual strike plate, the cutout, um, or as I said, putting a pump wedge into push and separate the two just enough so that you can release that guard latch and uh, free up your latch, spring loaded latch for slipping. But again, it is a great entry method, quick entry method, and doesn't take a whole lot of practice to get right. Um, all you need to really do is do it a couple of times and you're pretty bloody good at it. Um, latch slipping is one of those things that is incredibly dangerous in the wrong hands but very handy in the right hands and as I said like for me I'll, I'll, the other thing I should say I've noticed anytime someone more than likely has locked themselves out it's usually been with one of these and a spring loaded latch because you, if you're like me you're a you know, you have a habit of flicking the thumb turn on the back and then walking out. Or, you know, you've locked it, you've got the door open, all of a sudden you go outside, paint the washing out, wind blows the door shut and she's locked. More than likely, you lock yourself out because of one of those spring-loaded latches. I'm not saying it's the only way you can lock yourself out, I just notice it more. Um, I've, I've done it myself with one of these. Rather than the manual turn deadbolt like this one here, where you manually have to lock and unlock your door. Um, you're less likely to lock yourself out because you need a key to actually do it, unlike one of these. So there you go. That's latch slipping. 
The tools, as I said, you can use a plastic shim. I've told you how to make them. You can use a Sparrow Slim Jim, which I have in my Break Into Anything kit. And I also have three traveler hooks that I use. Two of them are in my Break Into Anything kit. I have a thicker one and a thinner one. And I also have one... on my keys. So I carry a little key ring sized traveller hook on my keys that if need be I can actually use and have used to slip and I'm trying to do it in front and blocking the camera. I can actually use it to go in and it's really hard to try and do it on here and uh, slip the latch with a little key ring one. But I'm going to show you how to make the full size ones plus my little key ring one as well um, in an upcoming video. So there you go. That is the first random or other entry method of bypassing a lock. I'm going to go into a couple more using Bob, the board of... Dis was it the board of... Bloody hell, I've had a mental blank. Board of Brutality. That's it. Um, so... Yeah, that's the first one. Latch slipping, it's a little bit of fun. Do you do it? It's more of a locksmith thing than us lock sporters, but something that, you know, should keep in your little bag of tricks in case of an emergency situation. But there you go. That's this one. That's why I don't really like these. I prefer the manual deadbolts. That's just me, though. I'm not a security expert or anything like that. So, all right, let's quickly move all this down and we'll finish up. Alright, so yeah, as long as you install your latches properly and try to get rid of all that little play and everything else, they're actually not bad. Um, just need to make sure, get a locksmith to install your spring load latch, latches in for you. Um, just to make sure they are installed correctly. But, anyway, there we go. That is this week's one. I'm going to come up with a couple other ones and show you a couple of different methods on those other locks that I've got on Bob. But anyway, as always, always follow the codes. Keep lock sport legal. You know it. Don't do anything bloody stupid. Don't forget to come and join us on Discord. Destroy Mid League of Pickers. The link's in the description down below. Don't forget, you can also find Dalp on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok, where I put up post photos, what's going on in the background, all the fun stuff that happens around here pretty much. Don't forget if you're looking for great equipment at very awesome and competitive prices, don't forget to check out locksmithstoolbox.com. They're an awesome Australian company, and as you know, that's where I get most of my locking equipment from. Don't forget, if you want to get your hands on some bloody doubt merch, you can at Teespring. It is now available on there. There's a link to it in the description down below, the same as the Locksmith Toolbox and the Discord server um, as well. It's up to you if you want to get it. If you don't want to get it, it doesn't bloody worry me. Don't forget, if you want to get in contact with me, contact me through any of the social medias, Discord, or send me an email at darkartslockpicking at gmail.com, and I'll get back to you if you like what you see. Don't forget to give a thumbs up. Really do bloody appreciate it. And until next time, cheers, guys.